What's up everyone? Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we are going to data log our voltage system. Whenever we're talking about a voltage system, we are referring to the alternator and the battery. So if you're here just for the tutorial, I'll drop a time link for you guys on the screen. You can just jump ahead. We'll catch up with you guys real soon. Otherwise, if you want to find out a little bit more info about the voltage system, just stay here with me and I'll explain. Before we start, i got to tell you guys some bad news. When I just looked down, I noticed I just missed some toothpaste. Well, obviously when I was brushing my teeth on my jacket, so that sucks. Your voltage system plays a massive role in your car. Let's say, for example, your battery is a little bit low. It's around 11.2. Your car might not even start with such a low battery. And did you also know it is unsafe for your car to actually remap your car, let's say with a stage 1 or a stage 2, while your battery voltage is low. That's why you'll usually see the people, they'll hook up some battery chargers or one of these big power banks to your car, just to make sure your voltage stays correct. Because if you do upload a file while your uh, voltage is a little bit too low, your ECU might not actually pull up the entire file. There can be a lot of complications and your, it can even destroy your ECU. So voltage plays a massive role. So we're going to talk a little bit more about performance and why voltage matters. The information I'm about to share with you guys doesn't really fall under stage 1 or stage 2 remapping. Usually these are the same alternators that's being used on cars that's pushing about 1000 horsepower or more. So obviously you got to think for yourself, if your car is so powerful to push 1000 horsepower and you can push your car till 10,000 RPMs, you got to remember that your electronical system, all your voltage and ampages should go everywhere. So let's say your car's normal RPMs are 7000 RPMs, now it's got to compensate for 3000 RPMs more per minute. So that is a lot of strain on your car's voltage system. If you've got a very poor alternator, it's going to drop the voltage throughout your entire system. I mean, even some sensors, if they don't receive the right amount of voltage, they'll just read blank. So you guys can understand now why a voltage system can be so important. So let's talk a little bit about numbers. Whenever you go to any kind of battery center where they're going to test your alternator, usually they take one of these multimeters and they keep it against your battery and just to see how much the battery is at a current moment when your car is idling, you will see always between 13.5 and 14.5. Whenever you're above, it's actually that your alternator is overproducing and it's bad for your car. It can actually destroy your battery. And if your battery is below 13.5 while your car is idling, that means your alternator is not sufficiently enough charging your battery. So there is a lot of interesting facts around all of this. Right, so some of the people pushing it over a thousand horsepower, they will actually get these kind of alternators to produce about 14.8, which is a little bit above, right? But when you do accelerate hard, because the car is pulling all of that voltage system, your voltage system is going to drop. So at least with these kind of cars, it's going to drop from 14.8 to 14.2 or whatsoever. So for a basic car like ours, we are going to see between 14.5 and 13.5. When we are going to do the data log, which we're going to do right now, we're going to look how much the voltage drops. It is normal for your car's voltage to drop from 14.2 to 13.8, something in that case. We don't really want to see a drop more than 0.8. Okay, so let's say, for example, your car at idling, the voltage reading is, let's say, 13.8. It's already very low. You don't want to fall underneath the 13.5 bracket. So that means if you're going to accelerate hard, you're going to take 8.8 .8 away. That means you're going to run at 13 voltage, which is really bad. You should really check out your alternator then. It can be a bad ground. It can be bad cables or whatsoever. You always want to make sure that your lowest drop is never below 13.5. So yes, you'd also don't want to see really a drop bigger than th uh, 0 0.8. That's just saying that there is something pulling really a lot of voltage from your car, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's something to look forward to of upgrading your alternator in the future. All right, so let's go to the data logging. I currently have VCDS open. We're going to go here to select control module. Also, my car's ignition is on, but do note I did not start it. So just only the ignition is on. We're going to click on engine and then we're going to click here at advanced measurement values. 
there we go so what i like to always choose is the engine speed do note that this is not the vehicle speed this is the engine speed the the speed that is rotating at so then right over here we also have got our voltage but we're not going to go down for that one we're going to type in here voltage and then right here you guys can see supply voltage so this is our alternator that's supplying the voltage or the amps or the electricity to the battery and then this one voltage terminal 30 is our battery so as you can see my battery is very low we're at about 11.4 i do not drive my audi every day as like a weekend car so occasionally i drive it i don't know how the battery is lasting i haven't taken this battery out to charge it in a very long time i mean like it's been in this car for a year only driving the car for the weekend so it's actually holding up really really good and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say group the uds request and we're gonna say turbo turbo just allowed as you guys could have seen maybe the sample rate went up it's just to gain more information from your dyno or from your pool or whatsoever so we have set up our vcds we're just gonna say log it's gonna ask us where we want to log it we're gonna say our desktop we're gonna keep all of these things together we're just gonna rename it to voltage uh let's just call it run or what the, whatever you want to call it so we're going to save it up so now that our vcds is completely set up we're going to take it and put it right next to us on the seat so we're going to go to the road and do our pull on the road i want to talk to you guys a little bit about safety measures and also what you got to do and watch out for so all you're going to do is you're going to put your car in third gear you're going to do your pull please make sure there's no traffic there's no one around you make sure it's in a very safe area so also i might get a question now why do it in a third gear pool and not in a fourth gear so you see on diners it is safe to exceed speeds at that limit uh but on the road it's not that safe for example you're in south africa our speed limit is 120 on our freeways and my third gear can do 120 as an example but the fourth gear can maybe go to 180 to 200 which is passing the speed limit you can actually get fines you can anything can happen is dangerous for you and dangerous for people around you so how this works is is you're going to go onto the road you're going to shift to third gear you're going to keep your rpms low you're going to turn around you're going to click the start on the laptop you're going to look in front of you you're going to floor your foot all the way till the red line so if you're manual you're going to obviously shift right before the red line please don't break your car if you're an automatic uh, some people have got a TCU tune, so it will not shift unless you shift it. So please do not break your car. Whereas with me, I don't have a TCU tune yet. It's going to shift automatically just after, I think, if not on 6,000 RPMs, it's going to shift automatically. So what I'm going to do is as soon as I go to fourth gear, I'm going to take my foot off the pedal. And we're just going to free it down to a comf like a really comfortable uh, speed where we can actually just take our eyes off the road for a second to click stop. And that is it. We're going to make a U-turn, come back home and view the data log. So let's quickly go to the road. I am currently in third gear. We click start, put our foot to the floor. There goes the turbo. All the way through. She just shifted. Don't worry, that is just my speed alarm. We're going to slow it down to a comfortable speed, as I mentioned, and click stop. So that's literally all you do, as simple as that. So we're going to quickly make a U-turn, we're going to go back home. I see the screen shaking a little bit, I'm sorry about that guys, I've got to get myself a better stand. <laughs> Let's quickly go back home and we're going to view the data log and show you guys how all of those shenanigans work. We are done with our pool, I'm back home now, we can switch our car off. We can then go done and close, we can literally just close VCDS at this moment. Go back go back and etc so right over here on the desktop is where my voltage run is so for this this is actually a csv file i think it's more like an excel spreadsheet file so we are gonna have to take an excel spreadsheet file and convert it to a graph so this is actually very easy there's a website where you can go on you're just gonna put on your hotspot on your laptop let me do that quick there we go i'm connected we're gonna go quickly to chrome or google well whatever it is that you use we're going to type in datazap.me i'll drop for you guys on the screen as well me such as me and then you're going to quickly go and log into your account and if you don't have an account you're just going to go and create a new account quick so we're going to go here to upload our log we're going to say the english version if you're if your vcds was in different language you can say international language 
we can just drag it in here but uh, usually if i drag it like i have to scroll down as well so it's just easier for me to select it but anyway there we go <laughs> okay that, that anyway so our voltage here it is voltage run is on we're just gonna say our title is voltage run i'm still trying to fix all of this this program is actually very nice. I said in every data logging video of mine, I'm keeping public on over here. This means if you guys can even find me, my account name is Sabertooth Performance. If you guys can find me, you can come and view all my data logging files. I don't know how you do it, but if you find it, you can view all of them. So we're not going to fill in all the rest now. I'll fill that in a little bit later. So we're going to quickly say save. Here comes the moment of truth. This is usually the part where I'm like the, the scaredest. So here you can see my entire run. So this is our engine RPMs. We started off at 1.7. We push all the way through till about, what is that? 6.1, wow. So it looks like when the weather is a bit colder, shifts later for whatever reason. <laughs> so we went from third gear to fourth gear. This is this downfall you guys see, and then just me letting off of the throttle till I got a comfortable speed and switched the, uh, well, stopped the data logging. So we're gonna go to our voltage terminal, okay? so. I must tell you guys, you need to know that the battery and the alternated voltage is going to be always the same, but it's like a, a duck, a, a duck scenario with their babies where the alternator is in front. So if the alternator is showing 14 volts, you'll see the battery is going to catch up to 14 volts. So they are very similar. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click here. Oh my gosh. Okay, this, this graph is all over the show. Let's quickly click on this other one and just see if it's going to be a little bit better. No, both of them are exactly the same. So... We're going to look for the highest. Our highest is 14.4. So we are 14.440. So we are literally just a, a small little lump underneath 14.5, which means we haven't exceeded what we are supposed to exceed. Our lowest right over here, 13.8. So what drop is that? That's about a 0 0.6 drop. So obviously with myself, I would have liked to see nothing less than 0 0.5 of a drop. But we are still above 13.5. We are still in the parameters of 0 0.8 because we are at 0 0.6. This is 13.860, 440. So yeah, we're about 6.2 if I'm not mistaken. Sorry guys, <laughs> it's really early in the morning. The sun is hardly even shining. So I'm still sleepy, but my maths could be wrong. But yeah, it's about, uh, let's, just, let's just call it a 6 point something drop, which is not bad. So what I really like to see is I actually... All of these little spikes, I mislook them. I'm trying to like draw a straight line. So if we go over here, I see a line like this. I see a line that drops and an average, as you guys can see here, we kept an average of 14 volts, which is amazing. And then near the higher RPMs, I see a slight drop and then it goes sideways, but that is still 14. I mean, this this alternator, well, this voltage system of mine is actually doing a pretty good job. As soon as I let off the petrol, uh, obviously the coils and the ignition and spark plugs doesn't have to fire. There's a lot of load being taken out of the voltage system. It rises up to about 14.3, which is amazing. I'm really, really impressed with my voltage system. Like there's nothing for me to do. Like if I have to upgrade something now, I don't have to worry about the voltage system. I can worry about something else. So this is actually very interesting. I really... Look, it wasn't necessary for me to do this run at all because my car is only stage one, you understand? But it's just good, for example, to know what's the condition of your car. Let's say, for example, you might have problems starting your car in the mornings. Could be because your battery was low, because your alternator did not charge you. So this is also a way how you can find out if your alternator or your voltage system is good in any matter. So anyway, guys, there we go. If you got any questions, drop it in the comments below. I'll try to see to answer them as quick as possible. I do hope that this tutorial helped everyone out. Uh, I, I love to share all the information I get. Like every, if I go on forums or browse the internet, I've got questions. I always go and try to find answers for it. And I just love to share it with you guys. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to drop a big like. If you'd love to support the channel, hit the logo at the bottom right corner to subscribe. If you want to see any, of my, any one of my similar videos, hit any icon on the screen. And I'll see all of you legends in my next video. But for now, peace out.